the crisis. He says the reaction to that made him, quote, pretty angry, and that if the same situation arose again, I'm not certain I'd do anything different. Fox News' Jonathan Hunt. And you're listening to Fox News Radio. Fair and balanced. When you're in business, you want everyone to stay on the job. Western Health Advantage helps make it happen at a cost that keeps your company healthy, too. I'm Tom Sullivan. With Western Health Advantage, you get a local health plan for your local business with access to over 500 primary physicians and 1,800 specialists. Western Health Advantage is a trifecta. High access, great service, and low cost. For more information, go to westernhealth.com or call them, 916-563-2250. Western Health Advantage. Have more options. This is a watercolor I did. I'm at the St. John's Church. They're having an arts and crafts display. And this is my display. I'm going to pan to my left and I'm going to show you some more paintings. Along with these paintings, this is my eggshell carving display. Most of all this work I've done myself. As you can see, I'm very good at it. And I love to do it. It's not just a hobby with me. It's like a vocation. This is just further proof that Mr. Bucagnani is acting surreptitiously to try to get me off of this property. Now, I already vacated the property in, in obeying the, the court order to vacate, okay? Uh, we haven't settled the issue of my maintaining a workshop here. I asked him several times uh, to give me a lease agreement that I can continue working towards establishing a training shop where we would be training people in arts and crafts and he's already rented to, to people that just want to destroy it more. Um, this is not new evidence, this is the same subject. The, the notice to vacate says that I have 15 days to get all the rest of my property out of here. Um, but if I can't, then the owner is to charge me $300 uh, uh, storage fee. And if I can't pay the storage fee, uh, then he has the right to sell all this property to recoup his, uh, his losses for storage. But he's not waiting for the 15 days to be up. He's already acting. He's already doing things surreptitiously uh, uh, so that uh, he's destroying um, or undermining the efforts of the court. Uh, this eviction notice he pinned on the door clearly states that he should maintain this property in storage for 15 days. He's not waiting the 15 days. He's moving all this stuff out of here in anticipation of my not being able to pay the money that I can pay him for storage. Now, last time I spoke to him, I said, listen, it'd be a lot easier for you to just rent this to me for a workshop, you know, and start a, a lease agreement 
uh, so that uh, I can continue towards working uh, for buying the property. But, you know, he's just continuously yelling at me that I owe him money. Well, I don't owe him money. He evicted me because he couldn't claim damages because the property was uninhabitable. Well, this commercial property, and it's, ha ha it's, ha it's habitable um, because it has running water, it has electricity, and if he were to bring it up to code, you know, we could install a sewage system from the city. But he doesn't want to pay the money to the city to do it. Now, I'm asking for damages so that he would have to. And also, he would have to with the help of uh, Sheffield Real Estate, because Sheffield Real Estate is advising him that he can sell the property without bringing it up to code. Now, anybody that wants to buy the property is not going to pay extra to bring the property up to code. They don't need the property that bad. This is a painting i done of a cowboy shooting the head off of a rattlesnake. I'm at Rocky's Barbershop and she's allowed me to make a video of this. Thank you, Rocky. Hello, my name is Gum, and it's story time. Do you know where the word gum's from? Well, it's not just chewing gum. It's what's called an acronym. It's three letters that each individual letter stands for a different thing. G, as in golf, stands for great. G R E A T Great U as in uniform stands for uncle U N C L E Uncle The last word begins with an M as in Massachusetts that's a long word. I'm going to spell each letter for you. M E S S A C H U T T E, Massachusetts. I think I spelled it wrong, but I'm going to keep going. Anyway, I'm going to read a story to you. Um I'm Uncle Gum, Great Uncle Myron, and this story is called The Egg. Here's the cover. It's by a Mr. Robertson. <clears throat> the Egg by M. P. Robertson. Look at that egg. Looks like it's falling right out of the sky, don't it? Can you see that? I'm going to hold it up real close for you. That's a big egg. George knew something wasn't right when he found more than he had bargained for under his mother's favorite chicken. <laughs> oh, look it. He looked inside that chicken coop. Look what he saw. He saw his mother's favorite chicken sitting on top of that big old egg. And he thought to himself, well, this is more than I bargained for. Anyway, let's read some more. He moved the egg to the warmth of his bedroom. For three days and three nights, he read the egg stories. Like I'm reading you this story, George read the egg stories. Imagine talking to an egg. <laughs> but I guess the egg heard him. Anyway, look at how he moved that egg. 
he had to get a wheelbarrow. The egg is so big, he needed a wheelbarrow to move that egg. Okay, in the other picture I just showed you, he's sitting on top of the egg that's sitting on top of the bed. Look at this picture. That's George, sitting on top of that egg. <laughs> <laughs> All right, rumble, rumble, rumble. On the third night, the egg started to rumble, 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 rumble. Look, look at George falling off of that egg. The book goes flying, and there goes George. See the next picture? He's sitting on the floor looking up at that egg, holding his head. Oh, no, what happened? The egg started to crack. Something was hatching. And it definitely wasn't a chicken. <laughs> oh, George looked at the egg and he saw a great big old eye staring right back out at him. And he thought to himself, well now I know that's not a chicken. <laughs> when the dragon saw George, it gave a chirp of delight. That, that, that probably the sound it made. Burp, burp. It chirped. It made a chirping noise of delight. Because actually he thought that, Ed, that George was his mom. George didn't speak dragon, but he knew exactly what the dragon had said. Mommy! Burp, 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 burp. I can't make that noise very well, can I? Anyway, the dragon spoke to him, just like he thought George was his mummy. George had never been a mom before, but it seemed that George has done his reading. George, I guess, liked to, to read or look up what dragons had. George had never been a mother before, but he knew that it was his motherly duty to teach the dragon dragon ways. So George must have done a lot of homework on dragons, because how else would he be able to teach the dragon dragon ways? Look at that dragon. That dragon, that, dra that silly dragon, he's got that eggshell on, just like it was a suit. <laughs> the first lesson he taught that dragon was the fine art of flying. You know how you find a bird and you nurse that bird back to health? Well, the first thing you got to teach that bird is how to fly so it can fly back out into the wild. Well, that's what George is doing. Look at this picture. That dragon's learning how to fly. Well, George knew that dragons were able to breathe fire. So, George had to teach him how to control that so the dragon wouldn't burn stuff up. <laughs> Look what he did. George took, a, George took a hot dog and he held the hot dog there out on the stick to teach that dragon how to use the fire because he was a fire-breathing dragon. And that dragon roasted that hot, dog, that hot dog for George. The third lesson was how to distress a damsel. Now, I think George is kind of going the wrong way here. I, I don't think he should have taught that dragon how to do that. Because look, he's got that poor girl tied up on a pole and that dragon is coming right at her. She must be really scared. Ah, okay, I get it now. And the final lesson was how to defeat a knight. Well, wait a minute, that don't seem right. The knight is supposed to defeat the dragon. The dragon's not supposed to defeat the knight. Anyway, look at this. George is all dressed up like a knight. And he's teaching that dragon how to defeat the knight. Mm -hmm. My goodness, I'm going to have to see what else happens. Um. 
Every evening, as all good mothers should, George read the dragon a bedtime story. One night, as he read from a book of dragon tales, the dragon looked longingly at the picture. A sizzling tear rolled down his scaly cheek. The dragon was lonely. He was missing his own kind. The poor dragon, he began to know what he was and that other dragons weren't around. And he got lonely to see other dragons or to be with other dragons. The next morning, the dragon had gone. George was very sad. He thought he would never see his dragon again. But seven nights later, he was woken by the beating of wings. Excitedly, he pulled back the curtains. There, perched in the tree, was the dragon. George opened the window and clambered onto his back. Look, look, George was so happy to see the dragon that he come out of his window and climbed on the dragon's back. And look at, they're flying off together. Well, where are they going in the middle of the night? <laughs> you see that cat? Look at the cat on the roof. That cat on the roof there, he's looking. What's going on with these people? <laughs> okay. They soared into the night chasing the moon around the world, over oceans and mountains and cities. Faster and faster they went, until they came to a place that was neither north or south, east or west. Now, where were they? Because if they wasn't south, if they wasn't north, or they wasn't east or west, where were they? They swooped down through the clouds, into a cave that gaped like a dragon's jaws. This was the place where dragons lived. The dragon gave a roar of delight. He was home at last. So the dragon came and got George. Look, the dragon came and got George and flew George to where all the other dragons were. And then the dragon came down into a cave and he showed George all his friend dragons. Look at all those dragons. George is saying hello to all those dragons. Isn't that nice? George hugged his dragon tight, and the dragon gave a roar. George didn't speak dragon, but he knew exactly what the dragon had said. Hup, hup. Thank you, George. I love you, too. Look, look. And that's the end of the story. I'll be reading you another story soon. My name is Gum, Great Uncle Myron. Goodbye. <laughs>